Hello and welcome to Worship This Week. As well as following the lectionary for today, this Sunday, the 11th of October, is the beginning of Prisons Week. And so our preacher today is the Reverend Peter Clark, who is a chaplain at Full Sutton Prison. Our service will proceed as usual, but in addition to this for today, if you look on the website, there will be prayers for each day of the coming week. Just a short two-minute clip with a prayer and a short introduction as to the people we're praying for. So welcome to worship. Let us praise God.
prayer of praise. Living Lord God, creator and sustainer of the universe, we praise you for your faithfulness and loving kindness towards us. Before time began, you were there, and you have guided and inspired your people throughout all ages. You do not change, and your compassion never fails us. Lord, you are far greater than any person or power we can know or imagine. We do not live in any buildings made by hands. Your church cannot contain you. You continually break out and surprise us. We think we begin to know you, and then you show us another facet of your nature. Surprising God, we praise you for the excitement and challenge you bring to our lives. Grant that we may draw closer to you in this time of worship. Amen. The reading is Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Jesus again used parables in talking to the people. The kingdom of heaven is like this. Once there was a king who prepared a wedding feast for his son. He sent his servants to tell the invited guests to come to the feast, but they did not want to come. So he sent other servants with this message for the guests. My feast is ready now. My steers and prize calves have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But the invited guests paid no attention and went about their business. One went to his farm, another to his store, while others grabbed the servants, beat them and killed them. The king was very angry, so he sent his soldiers who killed those murderers and burned down their city. Then he called his servants and said to them, My wedding feast is ready, but the people I invited did not deserve it. Now go to the main streets and invite to the feast as many people as you can find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, good and bad alike, and the wedding hall was filled with people. The king went in to look at the guests and saw a man who was not wearing wedding clothes. Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? the king asked him. But the man said nothing. Then the king told the servants, Tie him up hand and foot and throw him outside in the dark. There he will cry and gnash his teeth. And Jesus concluded, Many are invited, but few are chosen. A prayer of forgiveness. Forgiving God. One of your greatest gifts to those who believe in Christ Jesus is freedom from condemnation. Either your own, having been reconciled through Christ, or our own, having rediscovered our true identity as your children. What a joy it is to live our life in Christ, to believe in his name and to be united to him. To pursue virtue rather than being destroyed by lust. To strive for the most lofty and noble ideals. To dream your dreams and embrace your visions for our life. And to manifest the fruits of the Spirit like patience, kindness and gentleness in our life. What a blessing it is, Lord, to know that you do not condemn us for our past or present sins, for inward sin, even as we continue to struggle against it, for sins that arise from our physical and emotional brokenness, and even for sins that take us by surprise. Despite the fact that we are frequently grieved by what we say and do and feel guilty because of our failure, we are able to pick ourselves up and move on towards your loving purpose, because in Christ we are no longer condemned. Since you have forgiven us in Christ, we do not have to fear any longer. You empower us to overcome the destructive patterns and behavior that remains but no longer have a grip in our lives. Although we are still weak in many ways, you affirm us, strengthen our faith, and lead us home. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes
makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. Trust in you trust for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me on. He guides my ways in righteousness and he The New Testament reading is from Philippians 4, verses 1 to 9, Practical Counsel. So then, in this way, my dearly loved brothers, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I urge you, Odia, and I urge Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I also ask you, true partner, to help these women who have contended for the gospel at my side, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses every thought, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, 
Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence and if there is any praise, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Some 290 years ago, John Wesley, while still a university student, visited Castle Prison in Oxford at the invitation of his friend, William Morgan, another member of the Holy Club. Very soon they were visiting the prison twice a week and adding a further Oxford prison to their schedule too. This initial prison ministry soon developed into the Holy Club's commitment to visiting the sick, feeding the impoverished people of the city and teaching their children. Were these expressions of mercy and as indispensable grace, Wesley's response to the inclusiveness of the kingdom of God, of which Matthew writes in our gospel reading for today. According to Matthew, the statement, the kingdom of God is like, was used by Jesus 32 times, and specifically including in a subsequent chapter where he says, I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. In the original text, came is unlike the word visited, which can imply some element of inspection, whilst come is free from assessment or judgment. This is Jesus placing himself in a place associated with criminality where he wants to be met as a human that he is and not for a crime that he has committed. Being non-judgmental is an essential aspect of sincerely offering the words you are not alone at the start of Prisons Week. We're all aware that the coronavirus pandemic has in the last six months impacted upon every aspect of life, in some more visible ways than others. Prisons are, of course, largely invisible. So the lives of 81,000 men and women who occupy our custodial establishments and a similar number of people who work in them remain largely unrecorded by the public media and commented on in news reporting suggesting perhaps they are out of sight and out of mind and so excluded from our prayers. During the coronavirus pandemic, we have been accustomed to hearing the phrase in lockdown and of usually interpreting from a personal experience. Lockdown does, of course, have diverse connotations for the whole society, for you and for me, and for prison, it involves further restrictions being introduced into a community that already functions with very restricted activities. And so therefore, that limitation means that the work of workshops is eliminated, physical exercise in the gym, study in the classroom, and the frequency of showering, recreation, and of making telephone calls are all limited, and of course, the possibility of visits from family and friends excluded completely. Therefore, I find the phrase being united in lockdown problematic. Last Sunday, I was able to attend a service of worship in this place, but since the start of Passion Tide, when the Palm Sunday service I was due to lead was cancelled, there has been no worship in the chapel of the high security prison where I serve periodically. A few months ago, we heard regularly that despite being unable to attend churches, mosques, and temples, the British public were praying in greater numbers than previously. That increased engagement and desire to give attention to personal concerns and bigger questions of life, of faith, and hope is reflected in the work of all prison chaplains. 
In pre-COVID times, 30 men would attend the ecumenical Sunday service on a Sunday morning, whereas now more than double that number want to receive a copy of the readings and prayers for that particular Sunday. This involves that literature being distributed to each of the wings where they live with the purpose of maintaining the pastoral care and oversight of individual prisoners. Today's reading from the Philippians introduces the name of two women, Euodia and Sintichi, who, though involved in the evangelizing work of the writer, appear to have differing opinions on matters which are not mentioned. Diversity and, indeed, polarizing views on matters relating to the justice and penal system have long been held in society and in the church. A meeting with John Howard increased the willingness of John and Charles Wesley to speak out on penal reform in the late 18th century, when so many prisoners were interned for merely failing to pay debts. However, it was the ministry to the, those facing execution who, and of course remembering that almost 200 crimes at that time justified capital punishment, it was that ministry to those who were condemned to die that affected John Wesley's theology so significantly and developed it his understanding of, of salvation by faith. In Newgate Prison and in other prisons, Wesley was addressing the questions of what it was to be human. There were no bounds, it was inclusive. This including addressing the plight of foreign prisoners. And there were numbers of them, including those in Knoll Prison, where it was estimated that over 1,000 people were in need of food and clothing. Wesley's response was to organize an appeal to provide them with blankets as part of God's commitment to people in prison, as part of God's mission to all humanity. This visiting of prisons is reflected in the diaries and journals of John Wesley when he visited prisons 67 times during a nine-month period in one particular year. During the 40 years of the annual Prisons Week, the internal conditions of living and work in prisons have improved steadily, yet many problems persist as the societal changes occur and affect therefore, the organizing of a custodial community. A number of the organizations supporting Prison Week are committed to addressing penal reform on the length of sentences for minor offenses and many other aspects of life in prison. The maintaining of family ties for those in prison and the provision of support on release and the prioritizing of rehabilitative programs to reduce the incidence of repeat offending are just some of those. It is vital yet often neglected to address the questions of the criminal justice system. During the last few months I detect that the salutary expression take care has changed to one of stay safe in relation to the threat posed by COVID-19. Stay safe has long been employed in the signage of many prisons, which announced that not only is it a criminal offence to take a mobile phone into prison, but that the safety of all people is paramount in the mission statement. Safety for prisoners, safety for those who work within it, and safety for all those who visit it. Prisons Week is an invitation to pray, to act and declare. That sounds like the mission strategy expressed in the history and practice of Methodism and our concern for social justice. To give attention in the coming days to the work of prison and those who live and work within them is an opportunity for us to make those places which are largely invisible vividly present in our prayers and in our subsequent actions.
Let us pray. We pray, our Father, for those whose freedom has been taken from them, for all who suffer imprisonment, whether for crime or for conscience sake, for all those whose vision of your world is seen through bars and in whose heart the lamp of hope burns low. God of mercy, give them help according to their need and hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Amen. I'm going to end up in prison too, just because my dad's there. You're wrong if you think there are other possibilities for me. I know a criminal beats a criminal. It's not true. There's good in everyone. My dad's a bad person. Don't think that it could be different for me. That's where I'm going. Doing well at school, finding a good job. That's not important to me. Being in a gang, getting into fights, is what matters. Listening to me, you should just write me off. And don't ever believe I want to succeed. I've dropped out. I'm out of reach. Don't assume that I can become anything. You see, the script of my life has already been written. Don't dare to say there's still hope for me. If things were done differently, there could be potential. It's over. Unless you reverse your thinking, totally turn around how you see me, and don't believe it's over. There could be potential, if things were done differently. There's still hope for me. Don't dare to say the script of my life has already been written. You see, I can become anything. Don't assume that I've dropped out. I'm out of reach. I want to succeed. And don't ever believe you should just write me off. Listening to me is what matters. Getting into fights. Being in a gang, that's not important to me. Finding a good job, doing well at school, that's where I'm going. It could be different for me. Don't think that my dad's a bad person. There's good in everyone. It's not true a criminal breeds a criminal. I know there are other possibilities for me. You're wrong if you think just because my dad's there, I'm going to end up in prison too. Heavenly Father, whose Son came to redeem mankind and to be the friend of sinners, we commend to your mercy those who have offended against the law and are serving prison sentences. Make known to them your unchanging love. Turn their hearts to yourself in true repentance and give them renewal of hope and the opportunity of making fresh beginnings. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Taught my heart to fear His grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace appear The I first snares 
Let us offer our prayers of intercession with all God's people, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whoever lives to pray for us. We pray first for the needs of the world during this pandemic, which isn't just affecting our own nation, but every nation around the world. We pray for the leaders of government, for the health workers, for scientists developing a vaccine and medication. God help us all to fight against this virus that we might make the world a safer place. And we pray particularly at the moment for our brothers and sisters in America as they face an election which seems to be so divisive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, anxious, for those who have been bereaved. We pray especially for any known to us, for those who are suffering from the Covid virus, for those in our congregation, in amongst our family or friends who are sick at home or in hospital. We pray for those who have lost their loved ones, especially remembering the difficulties in attending funerals at the moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the Church, that in these difficult times you would give us wisdom and guidance, you would fill us with patience and compassion that we might look outside of ourselves as well as within to see where your mission is taking us and how we can help the Kingdom of God to be here on earth. In that story, you welcomed everyone to the table for the feast. Help us to be inclusive and welcoming to all who seek to follow Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And so we pray for all who want to make a new beginning today. For ourselves, for those who perhaps are finding faith for the first time, for any who are seeking new ways in life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Sing with me, and can it be? And can it be?
May the faithful God keep us loyal. May the changeless God keep us secure. And may the God of surprises keep us ever alert to new challenges. And may God's blessing be with us all this week. Amen. Today is the first day of Prisons Week, when we are encouraged to pray each day for different aspects of the justice system. Prisoners, their families, those who work in prisons, including chaplains and volunteers, and not forgetting the victims of crime and our communities. The YouTube service on the Rydell Methodist Circuit channel this week will focus on prisons as well. But in addition, each day, a prayer will be read with a simple introduction. Please listen, and then say the Lord's Prayer with us at the end. Today, Sunday, we say the Prisons Week Prayer. So let us pray. Lord, you offer freedom to all people. We pray for those in prison. Break the bonds of fear and isolation that exist. Support with your love prisoners and their families and friends, prison staff and all who care. Heal those who have been wounded by the actions of others, especially the victims of crime. Help us to forgive one another, to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly together with Christ in his strength and in his spirit, now and every day. Amen. And so united with prisons, prisoners and prison workers everywhere, we bow our heads to say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Come back tomorrow for the next day of prayer.